guest in Guido's studio here and uh, Guido what did you play what did you perform this was the solo from a song I want it all from all the blue album from the gala Freddy yeah. from as it seems and this was one of the songs on this album and this was the solo say it again what is the name of the band for the gala ah yeah I will see okay yeah it is amazing to uh, listen to the music here uh, in well in a way that it's really not too noisy and the sound of the amp is great so um, Guido will tell us a little bit about his amp. So this amp is specially made for me, it's a 50 watt Martian clone made by Peter Lindemann from Germany and this is basically with the power amplification part uh, from the 1987 and the preamp section is very very near to the Martian major. So what I wanted was a warm clean sound, Martian like but warm and really clean so I can pull a strap straight in the high input and it sounds great. Yeah. So basically you first wanted to have a clean a clean guitar sound. Yes. Yeah? yes. Um, can you give us an example how clean it the way the clean sound is? Mm -hmm. guitars and uh, original Stratocasters, but Guido uses a squire and uh, Guido tell us why. This is not a normal squire, it's one of these squire made in Japan, Japan Vintage in the GV series, uh, 1982, one of the first ones. And uh, at that time Fender decided to make guitars that were not so expensive as the American models. With the result, squire by Fender, made in Japan, and they were much better. Yeah, better than the originals. Than the originals, than the originals. and uh, so the uh, American guys started crying about this. And yeah, this yeah. is the 60s model, can be apparent. I checked the pickups uh, and I played. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. That's better. Um, as I play most of the time this, with um, distorted sounds, I. Um, The distortion uh, makes a little bit of difference, <laughs> yeah. okay. um, I use uh, often stacked humbuckers, but yeah. they have to sound, in this case, they have to sound like a single chord. Yeah. A little bit more warm, a little bit more compressive, but single chords. Yeah. yeah, okay. Uh, we wanted to talk about rhythm guitar. Yes, yes, very important theme. Um, most uh, players think about solo playing, lead guitar playing, because of all those great guitar players, you all, you all know. But when you can't play rhythm, you can't play a good solo. Yeah. So, um, often the rhythm guitar uh, in heavy music gets really boring when you always play power chords. Um, I give you a short example, long time ago, uh, 1983, yeah. Aussie style, Jack E. Lee. And I saw it in general te television at that time and I was completely flawed. I didn't yeah. understand yeah. anything. 
Yeah. What Jake did played, and this was overwhelming for me. Yeah. What did but you say? What what song is it? And back at the moon. Back at the moon. And not, not always. Um, everyone knows fits, but basically yeah. this, yeah. this thing. So it runs like as follows. fast, yeah. meaning you have to have a really good picking hand in time with a great attack and a great tone. Yeah. Yes, the tone must be equal, not yeah. like this from the dynamics, it must be straight. So basically you have to play. This has to work. Yeah, and we work. see, yeah. And what Jack Lee has done then, he put power chords, but in the upper octaves, yeah. not like this. You put it one of the And he changed some notes on the upper string. Um, so he started on the G power chord. Yeah. Sliding to the A power chord and then changing from the octave to the seventh. then is your sound because when it's too much distorted you don't hear this anymore yeah. all the frequencies from the other tones will damage the whole thing okay. so it must be a round tone that you really hear these differences ah, I see yeah huh? and then it runs uh, uh, it goes on from the F power chord back to the F changing the root It's, it's power chord, yes, it's heavy rock and roll, yes, but it's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And that's what I like about this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the second part, the bridge in this song is played with normal chords, so you have an F sharp minor, D major, and E. So when you play it only with power chords, it would uh, sound like this. <laughs> Nice, but very common. Yeah. So and when you play the normal chords, do you reduce the the volume? Uh, it depends on what you hear. Yeah. Uh, normally not. It yeah. depends on your sound. When you have too much distortion, it makes sense yeah. to pull it down to nine yeah. or eight. Yeah. This is basically enough. So when I put it Still sounds when you have the volume on chat. See, that's that's, right. yeah. that's that's important thing. And then comes a little run, a rhythm run, which is very similar to the intro of um, Crazy Train from Hollywood. Crazy Train is on eight notes, and now we have sixteen notes. And what I like about this, you have to change the right hand. You can play. And then you have to switch down to single note lines, very quick, very precise. I see. And this has to work. Yeah. And then the chorus part, which comes after this, um, is again with power chords, but with some uh, really nice uh, licks within there. You can A power chord, run over to C, to D. So you leave the, the A string open? Yes, uh, because the whole song, the basic part, is played in A minor. Yeah, it's played. And this is very often in heavy music that you can uh, use the open strings. Yeah. Uh, and so in this case you have an A power chord. And from 
C to D, yeah. more like purple style, a little, little, little bit, and then you run to G major. Third. Yeah, you only play, play the root note, yes, yeah, um, the G on the fifth fret of the D string, yeah. And yes, and with the index yeah. finger uh, on, on, the, on the G string, the fourth fret. Yeah. Um, you only normally don't play full chords um, when you play riffs like this because when you play too complex with too much notes at once, often the pressure is gone. Yeah. And so this rock and roll ambience isn't there. Yeah. It has to. Go forward. There are some uh, really nice things. I played a little bit um, with a, a little G major arpeggio. You use your middle finger. It's hybrid. Kind of um, hybrid thing. It's uh, it depends on the situation you play. You can play both. You can play it with a black drum. Yeah. When you do it with a black, you have to mute the middle string by your index finger, yeah. of course. That's true. Um, the other uh, um, possibility would be when you use black drum and middle finger or uh, the third finger. Yeah. It's a little bit more precise. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a kind of taste, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Do you do you often use your your middle finger when you play the electric chart? Um, sometimes yes. It, it depends on the sound I would like to hear. We have a song um, from Bobby Garrett called Twenty One Market Street, and it's a really groovy song with yeah. a really nice bass yeah. figure. The bass not that runs. Yeah. Um, and the chords I played a little bit more smooth. <laughs> really loud on stage yeah. because we don't get the sound otherwise yeah. um, and so I can clean it up a little bit yeah. and I decide on stage what I hear, uh, uh, how, how, how the sound is, how I should play it. When I play it this way and it's too much distorted in this case, in this moment. Yeah. I just pull down a little bit. Opinion, uh, of opinion, it's very important that you learn to play with the electric guitar. When you have these knobs here, yeah. you can use them. Yeah. Yeah. Just imagine the old stars, uh, just like Richie Blackmore, Jimmy Cage. They had a booster, they had a, and they had a guitar, and that's it. Yeah. They had to play everything with this. Of course, they were every time so loud that they hear every note. Yeah. So today you have a clean channel, a crunch channel, a rhythm distortion, and a beat distortion. This is great. But at that time, 30 years ago, no way. One yeah. sound and you have to work with it. So um, every one of these guys played so loud that, it, that, that they always had a sound and they could hear themselves. Yeah. So they had no problem to play solo. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Okay, that's it, Guido. For oh, why? Thanks a lot. We say thank you to Guido and uh, well, it was, it was great to be here and uh, well, hope we can do some more and learn a lot from Guido. So thank you. I think in the future time, when Vicky comes again for me, you'll be possible. Yeah, bye. Bye bye.